Hey fellow vote dwellers, it's Angry Turtle, and yes, I did it! I managed to figure out a useful circuit breaker build. I like to call it Don't Hit Yourself build. As you can see in this picture, the super mutants are absolutely hitting themselves because I have a circuit breaker build. I love those explosions and they go even better in some other scenarios. But let's go over some more details about this build before we dive into more specific scenarios where this build is awesome. So first, as usually, this is a special distribution I'm using in here. And once more time. I have way more perks than you actually need. Like all the carry weight perks are mostly related to me carrying too much stuff and I'm addicted to carrying stuff. So that's that. The legendary perks for this build, you don't really need too much. Electric absorption, very important. And some extra special. Taking one for the team, handy. It's not actually essential as I was testing it solo, which means this perk doesn't work and it still works great. I mean the build, not the perk. Perk does not work solo. And now, the important part. Perks, what's needed? First thing, you need to be absolute tank. So stuff like blocker is really necessary. Outside of that, as you can notice, I have mainly carry weight stuff. Lock and load optional to reload your launchers faster, as we have launcher as a secondary weapons that we'll be using. Then for perception fire in the hall, grenadier. Yes, grenadier do work with circuit breaker, and sil circuit breaker itself does work with grenades. So, absolutely fire in the hall, grenadier. Under endurance, essential will be life giver, and fireproof. I have additional ghoulish and colonat. More in more endurance, the better. Twelve is more than enough from my testing, but you could even increase it. The minimum will be fireproof and life giver, which is seven endurance. Under charisma, strength in numbers and tenderizer. Under intelligence, demo expert is important. First aid demo expert. So you need at least eight points under intelligence. Agility. I do have action boy, but really what's important is adrenaline to have some extra damage. We are running with a full health again. This build actually works better as a full health than low health, which is like exception to the rule. Usually everything works better low health. So adrenaline is important. Born survival, I have it maxed out here. It's not really essential. The point is you want a decent amount of AP. It's helpful, especially in expedition when enemies can drain your AP. And currently ghouls for some reason can drain your AP. So that, that, that is helpful to have a little bit more agility. Under luck, I have bloody mess. Ricochet, that's essential, that's a key. You must have that. That triggers the pistol perk. Then star jeans, good with salt, crit savvy. And I intentionally do not have anything to boost the damage of my criticals. It's not a mistake, it's intentional. As if I boost damage of my criticals, I can kill myself using auto grenade launcher in VATS. If I have crit every third shot without boosting it, I will survive. So that's not a mistake. That's my decision to stick with default amount of crit damage boosted only by mutation. And talking about the mutations, those are my mutations. I have a lot. I mean a lot, a lot different than usually as that's a carnivore build still for the benefit of mid buffs and we don't really want to boost critical so I don't need herbivore. Eagle eyes, that's my only crit damage boost. You could opt out of it and do not use it if you choose to. It's not necessary to have eagle eyes. Then electrically charged and unstable isotope those are essential. Those do work with circuit breaker pistol. So those are essential. Unstable isotope and electrically charged. Then health mentality for team bonuses, Marzipel for jumping, speed demon for speed. So those are the mutation. There's no adrenaline reaction. 
as we are a full health build. And as I said, Eagle Eyes could have been escaped. That will give you a little bit of extra strength and carry weight. But I have enough carry weight, so I'm not worried about this penalty. Now, the weapon. Obviously, it is a circuit breaker, and we are relying on the last round effect. To have this last round effect active at all times, it is important that you do not reload it. You can have ammo with you, you cannot reload it. If you accidentally reload it, what you need to do, just fire all the rounds and quickly bash. Bashing will stop the reload animation from triggering. So you will not reload and you're good to go. You don't even need to draw the weapon. You can, for most part, have it hidden and it still works. You don't need to show that you are carrying a weapon, which is interesting. One of my currently favorite grenades with awesome synergy with this pistol, Merv grenades. Yes, surprise, surprise, those do trigger circuit breaker, like multitudes of circuit breaker, making those grenades incredibly powerful. Of course, Nuka grenades, every type of grenade work great. Now our secondary weapons, when you do need to actually kill stuff and have some distance, I'm using Overkill with Murph Launcher. It's great. You just fire the Murph and switch back to the pistol. That's how you use that. Then for flying creatures, two-shot boomstick. You can as well fire all the messiah and switch the pistol. It's the least useful from all the weapons here, only used by me if they are flying creatures. And lastly, Nuka Launcher, or if you don't have it, as that still kind of legacy item from previous scoreboard, you can use two-shot auto grenade launcher, possibly with faster fire rate, less AP cost. And this weapon I would use if I need to annihilate single target or group of targets real fast. So I will switch to that as I already have Demo Expert and Grenadier installed and you can use it in VATS. With critical every third shot, I will survive. So that's important, I will survive. Now, other gear. So we covered the weapons, that's, those are all the weapons. Unless there are enemies that can only be killed by melee, so as a backup, I am carrying Red Appa. So that's auto axe. I'm carrying auto axe. Armor. Any power armor you like, really. The best is Strangler Heart, so this one. But only a little bit better. I was testing Strangler Heart and with all its effect, it helps a little. It's not huge. You don't see a huge improvement. I would say with Strangler Heart, this build will do approximately 10% more damage than without Strangler Heart to enemies all around you. Now, the important part are torso options, as you have several. What I like currently a lot is a medic pump. You don't need to worry about dying at all, since the medic pump has been upgraded with latest patch and now works with all kinds of stim packs. I will probably make a separate video how it actually works now, but it's cool. It's really cool. If not that, very good option if you want to kill melee attackers fast, and it really kills them fast, is... Where do I have it? Oh, there it is. Well, that Rebar mod for Torzo. This kills melee attackers really fast. And I will show you demonstration on different enemies and expedition as well with this build. Expeditions do work great as circuit breaker damage. Circuit breaker damage. Uh, let me show you circuit breaker. It's a dot. Deals damage and stuns enemies. It's not instant damage. It's a quick dot that works over two seconds. It's not huge and unfortunately cannot be increased. All you can do is trigger it more often, but it's a dot. So as you know from my previous video, dot is incredibly helpful in expeditions. And if you are new, dot means damage over time. So that's perfect synergy. Now, do you need anything else? No. With all this stuff, 
you are set. With all this stuff, you are set. I will show you the Strangler Heart with this Rebar versus melee enemies. It's pleasant to watch. Oh, and there is one bug, a new one, that you should be aware. I will mention it in here. It's related to the mutations. Mutations like unstable isotope at electric charge sometimes can bug out. If your mutations do bug out and stop working, there are two ways to fix it. One, going back to main menu and rejoining the world. Second one, dying. If you die, it will fix it. So if I want to fix it quickly, I'm actually not wearing any armor underneath on my power armor. So if I grab my Nuka Launcher, it is quite simple to kill myself or just keep shooting until I die. And now first demonstration. This is how well it works versus melee attackers. In this case, we have ghouls and welder rebar is equipped. So you can see the circuit breaker explosions going on when they attack me and trigger my melee mutation. Unfortunately, well, the rebar itself do not trigger the circuit breaker. But the melee mutations absolutely do. So whenever they trigger a melee mutation, they do trigger a circuit breaker explosion too. And you can see how well they are damaging themselves. So they don't need much help from me. They are dying nicely. Just by fighting me. All the dead ghouls in here already. I just need to wait patiently. Uh, all the horde of ghouls will disable themselves. So that's how well it works here on the melee enemies. <laughs> and it's ridiculous at, at, as well. This built in action is the most ridiculous built in action. Don't hit yourself, build the true circuit breaker build. And if you want to trigger a little bit more of those, a uh, bashing with a circuit breaker works too. Okay. I think I won. Now, another awesome scenario. Silo. Oh, and we have Yao Guai. So I can demonstrate you how well this build works, even with grenades. As you know, the high level enemies for full health builds are usually that easy to find. <laughs> Look at all those. Overlapping, overlapping animation from a circuit breaker effect when I pop this grenade. Two grenades, level 100 Yao Guai is dead. Is dead. This frag merv grenade. Awesome. You would love it with this build. Unfortunately, someone killed all the turrets inside the silo. So first, I will show you how well it works inside Expedition. And then I will be doing the silo, silo turret on different server. So I need to find the overgrown keeper. Where are you overgrown keeper? There you are. So here I have a grenade for you. Let's see if that will be enough for the overgrown keeper. Almost. Oh, it actually was enough or someone finished him off. Yeah, those, those frag grenades are great. The frag grenades are great. They can eliminate some of the boss-like enemies inside the expedition. Look at those dead. Like, this guy just died by shooting me. Look at this guy. Look at this guy punching himself. Don't hit yourself, Mr. Overgrown Elder. Just have mercy on yourself. Have mercy on yourself. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> they do die. Look at this. Look at this one, trying hard. Luckily, he has healers around, so they are keeping him alive. But they were not able to keep up with circuit breaker damage. Oh, wow. The healers were not able to keep up with circuit breaker damage. That's so awesome. Okay, let's uh, carry on on the inside. So about those mini bosses in expeditions. It is possible to get them down with a grenade too. Although it is better to use something else than grenade. Grenade seems to like not be enough. You can see it's a lot of damage from those two grenades. But if I would faster, I will go for Nuka Launcher and go in advance. And that eliminates it. That eliminates it. 
Although it's more fun to kill him with a grenade, uh, at least you will surprise your teammates. And honestly, if there would be a way to toss grenades faster, that would be the preferred way to go. Like, if I could toss grenades faster, I will be killing bosses with grenades. I'm curious how well those grenades will work for like endgame bosses. For example, Scorch Beast Queen and so on. Probably not enough, but who knows? Can probably do a chunk of damage. And as you can see, the stun radius is uh, really wide. Oh, I cannot even bash you. That's how you can do it with bashing. And look at the amount of damage. Like, I bash two, three times. I think three times. And I can kill a competitor. Oh, there is one more emoji needed. And now I have only three Merv grenades left. But let's see how much damage I can do to the final two bosses with three Merv grenades. Okay, let's pop three Merv grenades. Can I do like a this? Oh, wow! I I almost killed her with just those three Merv's. So it depends how well it hit. With two competitor, like Juji is tankier, so it didn't put him down, but it did her. And finally, I can show you how cool it is inside the silo. Look with all those turrets in here. Look what will be happening. Look at the damage dealt to those turrets because they fire so fast. So the best for last. Look how fast they annihilate themselves. Goodbye turret. Here you go. The other one's dead. Those robots already injured. This one's still alive. Go turret, go! Sometimes when so many stuns is popping up, they will permanently stun themselves. I, I saw it a couple times. Enemy basically backed out and was perma stunned. Look at that. I will get closer so it's easier for the turret to hit. It does trigger a lot. And dead. Like killing enemies just by looking at them. Please don't hit yourself, turret. Don't do it to yourself. Don't do it. Don't do it. You can resist. Okay, you cannot resist. So that's how this build works. That's how this build works. Like, I clear those enemies in the silo without taking my weapon out. Okay, I will help you out. Do it faster. Let me, let me bash you a little. Here you go. One more. Good. All the robots and turrets are dead. That's how cool this build is. That's how cool this build is. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about my circuit breaker. Don't hit yourself build. I love it. I'll be running it for a while now. As I finish it. And it's awesome. And that being said. Thank you all for watching. And see you all in the next one.